What's going on, guys? Glad you could join in today. What we're going to be doing today is I broke a lug stud on uh, one of my drums, and uh, we're going to be replacing that lug stud today. And I just want to go over a couple of things. If, if any of you guys have never broke down your own trailer drum and, uh, like, you might have an older drum versus a newer drum, like this right here is a 2010 Alco drum. It came on an on a Alco axle. And as you can see, it's all one solid piece. And on the inside, well, you'll notice that it's got these little, these little nuts on the outside of it. And there's these little screws on the inside. And what I'm doing is I'm going to take an old stud out of this, this drum because they're still good. But I can't, uh, I can't use them, you know. So just have to remove all of these. And for this, you'll need a. Uh, oh, it's be easier to use a screwdriver. You'll need either a drill or some sort of socket. I'm using an electric Bear brand impact wrench no they don't sponsor me it was just a cheap one that I found at, a, at Harbor Freight so you know take it for what it's worth if, uh, if any of you guys are in the market though for an electric impact Cobalt has their big one at Lowe's I think it's uh, $179 a lot of time I looked and uh, it comes with the gun, the charger, and a battery. And I bought this one before I seen that one. And I ended up paying like a hundred for the, uh, like a hundred and nineteen for the gun. I had to pay twenty for the charger and twenty for the battery, so I was in at one hundred and sixty dollars. And for ten more dollars, I could have got a. Brand. As you can see, this inner plate fell out and my stud fell out, which is what we were going for. All right, now I showed you the drum, the older drum. Like I said, it's one piece. The newer drum is, let me move this out of the way. Got all my now. I got extra lug studs. Oh crap! This is, just anyway, this is the big half of the, of the new drum. This is a limber. Uh, this is this is where the brakes rub out on the inside. The magnet runs runs off this inner surface, and it separates from the differential or the uh, the hub where your bearings are at and then your studs are, are actually in this piece and I got to replace this one right here so uh, let me let me go find my baby mallet I'll be right back guys Alright, I'm back. And you just beat it out. Bam. You just beat your new one in. Uh, ideally, you would want a punch from this, but Cobalt makes such awesome tools, I'm using their socket wrench. There we go. We got our new stud in there, and uh, we're going to be good to go. So to reassemble this new drum, it's not like, guys, I have to say I am really impressed by the upgrade on these new drums. They're uh, substantially easier to deal with than the older stuff. Is that that older stuff? Uh, 
it's just a pain like because that drum right there that thing is heavy and you're having to move that whole thing around it's just it's just a nightmare I mean, and having to having actually like this seal is right here it's so much easier to deal with put this back on here we're going to line these screw holes up guys you just you just don't understand i'm so used to working with older equipment this is a, this is a dream come true i don't even know what to say to myself i thought this was going to take a you know a lot longer than it has get all this stuff back back together and operational and if you guys have any questions about how to do any of this stuff that we've went over today you know feel free to uh, leave a comment or you can uh, find me Find me on uh, Facebook at you know the Facebook page is Privateer Solutions. I have to say though this. this Part of the job, uh, you'll want to find you a thin wall socket to get in here. It's a uh, this particular drum. It's a 13 millimeter socket, but I don't know if you guys can see down in here. But to get to these these bolts, it's a very it's a, it takes a thin wall socket to do that. job if you guys didn't know I had a lot of this pre-assembled or pre-assembled for you like right here these are your brake pads these are obviously a sign of wear I mean these are a point of wear this magnet right here this is going to be probably this is going to be a major a major point of wear because what it does this magnet rubs against the inside of your drum to activate the brakes and you can see because the when you're going forward it's going to pull against it and it's going to spin backwards and it's going to cause this shoe to push into the, uh, the inside of the drum to slow you down and uh a problem like if these magnets become overworn they can like short out and, and, and it'll screw up the entire circuit of your your trailer brakes so uh, and you'll want to make sure you don't just slide this drum right across this this spindle right here because you know it needs to be it needs to stay you know nice and smooth Once you get that back on, the next thing you'll want to do is uh, you got to put the bearing back in, which is this right here. These are oil bath axles. So yeah, yeah, we already got it in. It ain't. It was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Hot it's too tight, it? Yeah, yeah, you gotta make sure that, that this this kingpin nut is uh is only hand tight. You get the the uh 
bearing in there all the way and then you can back it back out. Just as long as it don't have any have any shake in it. Now. Good, yeah, that's exactly what we want. But I think it's got, you have to have a, it's got a break in period or something because it was really, it was running quite warm for a little while. And then it just. Well, it's probably warm. Yeah, that's true. 